right, guys, we're going to look at the stock market charts. We're going to find our next trade idea. So stay tuned. Now, in today's Fed day, we've got the Fed coming out here in about 30 minutes and they are likely going to move the markets. Now, let's cover that real quick and then we'll get into these charts. The Fed is anticipated to potentially talk a little bit about the taper, but I you know, I, I think they're going to hold off. I'm seeing, I'm seeing indications that they're not going to talk about the taper until maybe until their next meeting. So the, the way we want to play this is if they, if they come out dovish and, and really don't talk about taper or walk it back a little bit, then you're going to see that you're likely going to see the market rise a little bit, at least on that initial reaction. And looking at the charts, we have this gap to fill right here on triple Q's and there's a gap on the spy. So there's your gap right there. Uh, actually, I'd move it down just slightly. And we'll just say it's about seven uh, or 372.71. So we might get a pop right after the Fed announces or talks and a pop right into that gap. I'm looking at that as an objective area to actually short that gap fill. So that's what I've talked about. I'm, I'm basically looking to reshort uh, triple Q's on the gap for a more substantial move to the downside. So on the daily chart here, we gap fill and then we roll over over the next, you know, days to, to weeks, basically. So that's my objective area for shorting. Uh, and that's what I'll be looking to do on the spy. You'll see here on the hourly little uh, little bearish rising wedge pattern or a uh, bear flag, basically, on the daily and we also have this gap right there sitting at about 441.02. So I would look at a pop into that gap as the objective area to short the SPY. I'll be looking at triple Qs. I'll be more focused there, but um, potential there. So we might pop after the Fed and then roll over and fail. Things to watch for on that if we're gonna get that pop. Now on the daily on the SPY, you can see there is a potential bear flag playing out. It's kind of this flag pull and then you flag out and then you roll over like that. But we'll just take it day by day. If the Fed does talk about taper and they really start to set timelines on the taper, then there, there might not be a pop. We might not even gap fill. We'll probably just roll over. So in general, I'm looking at, you know, a short move up and then a rollover or just a rollover right here and now after the Fed comes out. Now that will impact certain things such as gold. Gold looking at right now, you know, still looks relatively bullish. Uh, we're holding this support line right here at 1754. We also have a trend line support. You see it marked in red and that's down there at 1718 or so. So depending on what the Fed does, we could fall, we could go up. I don't exactly know, uh, but here's the levels to watch, you know, 1754 area. And then if you do fall and you run down and hit there, that would be the buy zone. I don't think we're going to get down there. I think for whatever reason, I think the Fed's going to come out dovish. I think we're going to rally and fill that gap. I think gold's going to rally. And... And then I think the, the markets will start to roll over, maybe not even today, uh, maybe, you know, in the coming few days. But I'm looking for a gap fill on the on the indices, and then I'm looking for gold to rally. That's what the chart tells me. One of the reasons why, why I don't think we're going to sell down to the 1716 area is we have bullish divergence right here. And you can see it's just building. If we were to sell down, we'd probably take out that bullish divergence. And so that's not really how the chart's set up. The chart's more set up with bullishness as you've had prices continue to fade, you know, fade lower, especially right through here. And, and now I think we're, we're gonna start to see uh, prices move higher in gold to, to match up with the bullish divergences that have been building for a while. So watch these FANG stocks. These FANG stocks are gonna indicate likely where the market's heading. Uh, Amazon's you know, just kind of neutral right now. It's just sideways. So we could rally up and hit resistance. Maybe we pop all the way up there. I think Amazon, the point of resistance though, if you're interested in this one, is probably this gap fill right here. Right there at about, that's about 3,456. 3, so maybe we rally up into that. That's key resistance. I think we'll get rejected there. Google. Uh, Google has just about gap filled. So if we look here on the hourly chart, 
yeah, we, we've pretty much, we're gap filling right now. So Google might just roll over. There might be a little whip sauce, uh, kind of whippy action right after the Fed, and then we roll over. That's how this is set up. We got the 50 day. So I wouldn't, you know, if you're looking at Google, I'd look for a break of that 50 day right there. You get a break of that, it should be, uh, should head straight down to the, the kind of the major channel of support, which is right down here, sitting down there at about, 2575 Microsoft again it's just hovering above the 50 day break of the 50 day should set us up for a move down to well you've got the 100 day and then also you've got some horizontal support <clears throat> not much support really you have a reaction right here so maybe that plays out and that's about uh two that 263.20 um, but likely gonna, you know, if we break the 50, we're probably going right down to the 100. Uh, and that might even happen today. Apple back above its support zone, 144.40. So a little bit of a dip below and we've recovered it. But again, you've recovered it right before the Fed announces. So watch for this to fail. All right, I think that's the, the probability of what's gonna happen. I think we're gonna roll over and fail here. So for me, a break back below 144.40 area right in there is the signal that that will be a major signal that we're going a lot lower in Apple. And if you're going lower in Apple, you're going lower in the triple Qs and likely the market. All right. So target for Apple would be, you know, a tag of the 100 day and then ultimately probably going to work its way lower down to this lower support line right here in red. You can see we held support. Let me kind of mark it out here, here, there, there 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 really good support down there so i would look for the move down to run down to this trend line and then down there we're likely going to want to you know you, you know you'll, you'll want to cover shorts uh as we approach that and then you know wait for a break of course if it's going to go lower but ultimately you want to cover your shorts into that support level facebook facebook's already rolling over so here's your bearish rising wedge on facebook and you can see we're breaking down now. Again, we're below the 100 day and clearly getting rejected right now, but right before the Fed. So who knows how this will play out? You know, if the Fed comes out, it could pop it for a back test, then roll over. Uh, but the charts, I don't know. The charts tell me I think it's likely going to just continue to roll over. So look for that. That's the FANG stocks. Here's a short idea, BKE. You can see we have trendline support right here. I've got it kind of marked out right there. And we're, we we faded below it right in the, over the last couple, you know, month or so. Today they're recovering that, but again, they're recovering that. They're bouncing into those major moving averages uh, and it's right before the Fed. So oftentimes that's gonna be a whipsaw signal. Uh, you look at the volume, it's pretty low volume today. You see that volume candle. So this break above that former, you know, this was resistance, it was former support, it should be resistance, and they're breaking above it intraday, but they're doing it on really low volume right before the Fed. So it looks like a fake out to me. I'd look for a break back below this level, 42.29 for the next short, and that's likely gonna set us up for, you know, pretty good size leg to the downside. Of course, not today. It's not all gonna happen today, but I think it's it's a good setup for a downside move in BKE. So I have I actually stepped in and took a, a starting short position on it now, uh, and then if it if it starts to do what I think it's going to do, I'll add to that. Okay, and then GNRC. You can see we've got this tr upward trend line coming off the March 2020 lows. Lots of reactions here. So you can see all the reactions that we have on the trend line support. There's another one. There's another one. And recently we broke down right here today they're recovering that pretty impulsive you know 365 uh no volume though <clears throat> really this is a recovery of that broken trend line uh support on no volume so i think the fed is going to come out and they're going to smash this thing down too so there's another setup doesn't mean it's going to play out but look for a break of that trend line support you know 433 28 i'm still short this we'll see how this plays out after the fed and the turn, that'll kind of give us an idea of whether we're, we're, uh, we are gonna get that breakdown or not. And then the other one that looks very similar to this one is, is this net. You know, net is making a new all-time high today. Again, right before the Fed, uh, negative divergence continues to build. So you can see here all the negative divergence that's just been building for a while. 
Uh, and even in the shorter term, if I mark it out here, you've got negative divergence right there. So on the PPO and RSI, we're making a new all time high. We just recently broke this trend line, this minor trend line support here on the daily. And your breakdown, it wasn't super impulsive, but there's the breakdown. And then they've rallied it back up and they're gapping it. You know, they're kind of pushing it back above support right before the Fed. Again, moves that take place right before the Fed should be taken with a grain of salt. There's no volume on this breakout, so it's not like you've got institutions just stepping in and buying it. I suspect after the Fed comes out, they're going to smash this thing down like that. So things to watch for. You want to look for a break of that support again. 133.38. Again, it'll probably happen pretty quickly right after the Fed. So that's all I see right now. Those are some setups for some downside moves, and we'll see what the Fed what the Fed says and how the markets react to it. That's kind of key, how the market reacts to it. It's not so much what they say. You don't really, half the time you don't even really need to listen to what they're saying. You just need to see what the markets are gonna do and how they're gonna react to it. So Fed day, everyone good luck and I'll catch you on the next video.